it was kind of on the turning point. Then I took my first loss in front of my parents. Mm-hmm. And that was like, it was probably, I don't think I felt heartbreak or depression harder than that time. Really? Yeah. yeah. And that fight, when I look back on it, was nothing. It was amateur fight. Didn't count for anything. But at that time, it was like Everything. the end. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, it's over. It's done. I can't even win on these local crappy shows. And now how am I dreaming of these top tier world, world promotions? Yeah. And just seeing my, like, my dad watched me lose and stuff like that. Like, you know, I want to make him proud. proud and yeah. first fight, he finally comes out, jumps the border, finally comes across, sees it, and I lose in front of him. All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, Modern Brown Men. Episode number 14, we got a special guest in today for y'all. Y'all, y'all got to thank us for this one, cuz. <laughs> well, y'all, y'all got to thank Muck. Muck yeah. pulled this off. <laughs> uh, flew to a whole different city. Uh, just got here, what, an hour ago? An hour and, ago, um, yeah, man. You know, I want everybody to, you know, give a warm welcome, applause to uh, Gurdash and Mangat. Um, mm-hmm. To people that don't know, uh, he's an up-and-coming fighter. I truly feel that in that community, uh, screw just our community, I feel like, in general, um, I see some of your, you know, your your fights, and I'm like, this guy be business. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> just coming in here um, with the mentality you have. Uh, it's a it's a cool journey, man. Just give us a quick introduction to the audience that might not be familiar, you know, uh, with who you are. Um, give us a little intro about, you know, what you all about, man. Um, well, I've been fighting for about I don't even know how long, about 15 years now. So I've been <laughs> at it. Um, Originally, I moved up to Vancouver to become an accountant, yeah. <laughs> and from that, I discovered mixed martial arts. Never been in a street fight, never been anything like that, yeah. and it was just the essence of martial arts that made me fall in love with it. I think it was the idea of seeing how challenging it was, mm-hmm. and I never truly challenged myself in anything in life. Like I always thought everything kind of came easy, and if it didn't work out off the first time, Sorry, yeah. um, mm-hmm. it's probably not meant for you, and this was something where to this moment, to this day, 15 years later, every day there's a hurdle. There's some sort of mm. challenge that has to be overcome, whether it's mental or spiritual or anything like that. Mm. And that's why it has grown me into the man that I am today, not just in martial arts, but just in life in general, the person that I've become. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's what um, made me who I am today is martial arts and all in general, like mm. everything that led up to it. Um, I can't really credit it as much as what makes martial arts has accredited me. And that's kind of how I try to inspire the community and how to uplift them and kind of use myself as almost kind of like a vessel for whatever I'm supposed to go about on my journey to, to discover and give it back to the people to bring up the next generation. And, and yeah, I think that's huge. I think that yeah. what you just touched upon bringing, mm-hmm. I mean, kind of helping guide the, the kids in, in our community. Good thing is, man, like we don't have that outlet. We don't have anybody that in our community, community that we can just kind of reach out to or see someone that we can oh i can emulate that same success Mm -hmm. that you know gradushin has done in his career Mm -hmm. and i feel like with you is becoming more and more prominent now with people like you are outspoken now you guys are willingness to go out in communities and help kids that are really passionate about as you said you might not know it at the first time but Mm -hmm. as you progress into it more and more you're like i really love kicking the shit out of people you know (laughs) (laughs) or i just love the mixed martial like the it's an it's a form (coughs) of art no matter what work it is, whether like how we do podcast, whether it's art, or it's a form of art. And mm-hmm. you, f- and when you fall in love with it, and that's a beautiful journey because now it allows you to speak from your experience and let other kids know this is how I fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. And you know, and then you look, and other people be like, you know what, I want to do that too. And it's funny how you say you know, you, your background was from accounting to mm-hmm. this, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, I, but my personal background was from accounting as well. Oh, so okay. I was heading into <laughs> doing my CPA. Yeah. And then I'm sitting there like. Nah, I can't do this. I can't do this. Because now we're we're in this new kind of wave now Mm. where we are starting to take chances on different things. Right. Like like when I first started mixed martial arts, I was laughed at like and, and, and rightfully so when I look at it. Because I really had no background in anything. Anybody I told, I was an overweight kid. I was the smallest kid in like the circle of friends that I had. I'd be the last person you would choose to chase this path in any way. I had nothing really in my background that proved that I could be successful at yeah. it. Um, so, but just willing to take that chance, I don't know what it was. Some sort of fire in me, whether it was um, my background, whether it was my sickie or something. That something inside of me lit a flame that was willing me to 
let go of everything I ever knew before that, yeah. any kind of voice, any kind of opinion that didn't serve me in any way, hmm. and kind of just take this chance, any kind of relationships, friendships that I had that didn't serve me in that way, to cut them all off and be like, I'm going to create this brand new world and step into it and see where it takes me. Yeah. And now we're starting to see more of that. Mm-hmm. And it's actually really cool to see instead of like, you know, chasing a traditional route that most people do. Yep. Um, and it seems like parents are kind of opening up to it more too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like for myself, when I first started, it wasn't a, it, like, it wasn't a good talk in my house knowing <laughs> yeah. that I was dropping accounting, this good financial lifestyle that yeah. could be set up for myself, yeah. stable lifestyle. And now I'm chasing this mixed martial arts dream <laughs> of like, like what kind of stupid thing are you doing? You <laughs> moved you up to Vancouver to the big city to yeah. set yourself up further in life. And here you are throwing it all away. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of like, I couldn't really find anybody around me that was doing the same thing. Cause most of the guys I was, I was around were like, were not my color or anything like mm-hmm. that. And so I had to kind of guide myself. It was a lot of lonely nights, a lot of times where I just spent a lot of time on my own, but I fell in love with the process. And by mm. falling in love with the process, it was that I found this new love for myself. Yeah. And I think that was the biggest thing for myself was that, that, I don't think I really, when I really sit back, I really liked who I was. Mm -hmm. I just kind of attach myself. If somebody gave me attention, Mm -hmm. I attach myself to that person. Right. So, but then all of a sudden now I've cut off all these cords of Mm -hmm. my past Mm -hmm. and now I'm starting to start brand, like brand new over. And how I started was right from the elements. I used to go to like white rock here. Uh, It's like a beach and I would just go sit there by myself hours Mm -hmm. on end. I used to walk into the water by myself. Nobody knew I was out there. Nobody knew what I was doing. Nobody knew what I was up to. Mm -hmm. And it was just this weird process. that, And I don't even know. Like, I didn't read some self-help book. (laughs) I wasn't looking at Tony Robbins who told me to go to the water or something (laughs) like that. It was just this weird journey that I was on that every day I was just kind of piecing it together. Um, I wasn't really training with a proper MMA gym yet. I was just kind of doing my own thing, just training all day, spending time by the water. And I was falling in love with just the simplicity of things. Yep. Mm. Um, I was around a lot of stuff and I see it even today, like materialism. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I let go of chasing any of those things. And I fell in love with just the water and nature, being out there, going for runs in the forest, mm. swimming, like, you know, like, like very simple things. And that was kind of like this warrior lifestyle that I surrounded myself with mm. eating very simple meals, Right. I didn't need fancy dinners. I didn't need <laughs> nothing fancy. I didn't need to go to a fancy restaurant. Yeah. I ate the simplest of meals, had a simplest of schedules and just worked on myself all day. Mm-hmm. And I did this for like two, three years, like just by myself. Yeah. And then I found like MMA gyms along the way, like within that time period also. Mm-hmm. But if I hadn't had that and found like, like became my own best friend, mm. I don't think I would have succeeded at the level I am. Like now I'm top five in the world. And Crazy I started at a time same. where nobody knew what I was doing. I was fighting on amateur like shows. Um, I had to jump the border to go to like like casinos on the reservations yeah. to fight because Crazy. MMA was illegal on the streets here. Yeah, like even true. gyms here weren't legal at the time. No, no fighting was allowed. And so I always had to go over there and I'd be fighting some guy from like a b- biker gang. <laughs> and then my sister used to drive me across the border because nobody else knew what I was up to. Fights weren't streamed online. Nobody knew what I was even up to. Yeah. I win my fight. I jump in the car and my sister and me used to drive go. back across because <laughs> we couldn't hang around because these biker gang guys were right in the front rows yeah. and I was beating up their local what hometown the guy nah, and they used to bring story. me in <laughs> and I had to do that a bunch of times. I did this like for my four, my first four or five fights yeah. and yeah. my parents didn't know about it yeah. and <laughs> nobody knew about this and I just told my sister that, listen, this is what we're doing. Yeah. I need you to drive me to this and <laughs> that's how like my early, like the very beginning of that yeah. of the whole Start journey up. started yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's where the coaches discovered me because there was one of my first fights i had a really bad like fever on the day i think i wasn't even sick i was just so, so sick to my stomach from nervousness yeah. and anxiety of the whole situation that i made myself sick yeah and um i didn't have the skills but i beat the guy the hometown guy <laughs> and the guy and the coach is like listen man like you ain't got the skills Mm. but that's not what we were looking for. We were looking for heart. You mm. can't teach heart, and yeah, you had a lot of heart. Now we can build the skills on top of that, and yeah, then yeah. we can see where this whole thing goes. Mm. And that's kind of where it started from there, where they're like, you can't build heart. You definitely have that. You have something inside of you yeah. that we can build upon, and from there we start building everything from yeah. there. And that's the difficult part is just 
<clears throat> kind of like relating, trying to talk to, to have a conversation with your parents about it. It's very difficult for them to really understand your passions because for them it's like, okay, this is not realistic. Oh, of course. Right? Yeah. It's like <laughs> your accountant makes some money and that's mm -hmm. your life. Right. Yeah. Even if you have one side of like side hustle they're trying to do, they're like, no, that's just, this is not realistic. Yeah. yeah. So kind of like, I mean, it's quite relatable to all of the things that we're doing, right? Like a lot of stuff that's relatable is just like, honestly, I didn't tell anything to my parents. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm doing this. Cause I know, you know, well enough is that they're not going to understand, right. but they're only going to understand when actually things come into real reality. When things come into yeah. fruition. Right? Yeah. So the one thing though, I, I do want to like, I'm curious to know is like, for those who do want to have that support, have that conversation with their parents, how would you say they take that first step then? For myself <laughs> personally, it's a quote that my dad gave me and I don't think he knew. There's a lot of things that my dad said to me growing mm -hmm. up that he didn't think that it would manipulate it in the way that I did to become, to end up on the path that I did. Yeah, yeah. But I literally told him, I'm like, a lot of things that you said is what made me go for this. He thought mm. I would apply to something. Like, you know, my dad was always like, <laughs> don't talk about it, be about it. Like, you know, mm. don't let your, like, like, so I didn't tell them about it for the first year. Yeah. I was out there trying to be about it. So when I was being about it, yeah. now let me tell you, this is what I was up to this whole time. Yeah. I actually wasn't going to accounting class. I've actually been <laughs> fighting this whole time. So you technically told me, don't tell people about what you're up to yeah. until you kind of have action in progress. So that was advice that he gave me that I ended up using back on him. Yeah. Um, for myself, it's just like, I get it from my parents' point of view too, mm. right? Like, like, so I get it from that. For myself, I would just say like, you gotta have a plan. Like, you know, I have a lot of kids that come up to me too that are like, I wanna become an MMA fighter. I wanna do this, I wanna do that. I can say, yeah, great, go for it. But what's your plan? Yeah. Like, what's the plan? Like, what's gonna happen when you hit adversity for the first time, mm -hmm. are you gonna fight through it, or mm -hmm. is that gonna be it? Mm -hmm. Do you think, it, do you think it's a rock star lifestyle that you, just because you see a couple of these fighters like your Conor McGregor's, your Sean O'Malley's living this lifestyle, do you think it's just rock stars and girls and getting into clubs? And like, do you think that's what it is? Because if it, if that's what you think it is, you're gonna fall apart yep. so quick on this path. Yeah, you have to fight for something deeper, whatever the plan is. Mm -hmm. So for myself, I always say have the conversation when. You've had you've had the conversation with yourself many times yep. mm. when you've laid down the path. Because sometimes we dream, but then we dream on Monday, but Wednesday we forgot what the dream was. Mm. So like you know, the ideas go in and out of our heads. I've done that like lots of times too. Like you know, had all these old business planning by Wednesday. I'm like, ah, screw it, I'll, I'll stick to like whatever <laughs> I'm doing. Yeah. So you gotta actually believe in what you're doing and have a plan in action. Then present it then has then sit down be like this is what it is because you know your parents are going to dissect the crap out of it oh, like yeah, obviously right oh, off the yeah. bat right <laughs> yeah. like like my dad said to me he's like um he thought i was going to come to my senses as soon as i got my nose broken mm -hmm. so i invited them to a fight and it was just a local fight it wasn't like in a cage or anything at that time it was like in uh these universities it used to be open mat used you would have to pay a fee to fight mm -hmm. and you'd fight like four times and be like one three minute round but you'd be covered and stuff First shot, got my nose cracked, like oh, broken, oh shit, bleeding shit, everywhere. And my dad turns to my grandpa. He's like, there you go. He's going to come to his son. There's no way fighting through that. <laughs> I was having an asthma attack. I fought the next four fights, won the whole tournament. And my grandpa turned to my, my dad. He's like, you ever try to stop him? You see what he just showed you there? Yeah. He just showed you the heart himself. Right? Yeah. So from there, um, that's where he was kind of on the turning point. Then I took my first loss in front of my parents. Mm -hmm. And that was like, it was probably... I don't think I felt heartbreak or depression harder than that time. Really? Yeah, yeah. And that fight, when I look back on it, was nothing. It was amateur fight. Didn't count for anything. But at that time, it was like Everything. the end. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, it's over. It's done. I can't even win on these local crappy shows. And now how am I dreaming of these top tier world world promotions? Yeah. And just seeing my, like, my dad watch me lose and stuff like that. Like, you know, I want to make him proud. proud and yeah. first fight, he finally comes out, jumps the border, finally comes across, sees it. And I lose in front of him. Mm. and mm. I, and i'm like this is gonna fall apart now yep. yeah so then that's when i went back into isolation and i fought three fights without them knowing about it and i would only call them after the fight was done because when i was fighting none of these fights were streamed nobody would even know you did mm. now even these amateur fights these kids are getting on ufc fight pass yeah. and stuff like <laughs> like crazy. the like the promotion and the production that these amateur fighters have now yeah. is yeah. what we dreamt of at the highest level mm -hmm. like nobody knew about our fights and so I used to just tell them, and then once I got back on the path, that's when I was like, you know, like, yeah. like this is what I've been up to. Mm. Now my parents are like my biggest fans. Like <laughs> my dad, 
he he's watched my fights more than I ever have watched my fights, mm-hmm. like replay over and over and over. And um, he's a shock that everything that I said I made come true. Mm-hmm. I told him that I I told him that I would go fight on his home soil, and mm-hmm. I would become one of the first to do it. So do it mm-hmm. And I would make it historic. I did it. I said I would go to Mumbai and everybody would know my name and everybody would know our family's name. I did that. I'm like, Bollywood stars will want to get to me. Yeah. That, that, that happened. I'm like, I will make it to the highest promotions. Did that. I'll make it top five. Did that. So it's like I've, I've proven so much of it that, once again, it was my actions. Mm-hmm. I could have been like that. I'm going to be top five. I'm going to be there. Like, okay, cool, it's man. Whatever. You've said yeah. a lot of things in your life that you haven't really, <laughs> yeah. really walked through and here you are now. So that's what I always say that you need to have a game plan, but you need to really think it through. And the thing that it starts from, like, if when I have kids and they come to me, Hmm. I'll be like, what's the vision behind the dream? Yep. That's what people forget. That's why a lot of these kids that come to me, they're like, what, uh, what martial arts should I start in? What should I start in first? Hmm. I'm like, let me ask you first. What's the vision? Vision. What's the vision? You probably didn't even think about the vision (laughs) because for me, the vision wasn't about getting into clubs. It wasn't, it wasn't about anything materialistic. It was about representing my warrior heritage that has not been represented where we're taught about it our whole life. But yet I'm watching the UFC. I'm watching all this and there's not a single one of us in there. there. And I'm like, where's that? Where's the warrior? Where's the the one thing that we're taught in? There's not a single one of us. Like why? Why, why can't we go into battle where only one guy goes in the cage exactly. and the rest of your army has to sit outside by the cage? Because yeah. well, like, we were never taught that. You go as a group, mm-hmm. right? So for me, it was just like that was a vision to represent that, represent the underdog, represent the kid that was told he couldn't make it no more, mm. uh, make it nowhere, and all those kind of things. That was the vision. That's the vision even today, 15 years later, still sits on my wall mm-hmm. and has held me through it. It's held me through being broke borderline homeless not having food for weeks on end uh using whatever dollar i had in my pocket to move to the best gyms move to montreal and 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 basically be six months beyond on rent like you know like i told you guys i could have had an accounting career and i would have never had a single one of these issues (laughs) i would have had a steady paycheck bi-weekly like you know pension plan and all that stuff but i that was all given away so I had to have a vision that would make me not resort back to that. Go back to the safe plan. I really had to believe in something. Yeah. Because if you're a CPA accountant, you can definitely get bottle service. 100%. You can definitely get girls. <laughs> you can definitely get all that stuff. Yeah. That's the easy way to go. Yeah. But I, I didn't care about any of that stuff. For me, it was all about representing something at the highest level. Mm-hmm. And I think a part of it was also I didn't want to prove, I'm not going to say haters right, Mm. the naysayers Naysayers, because the naysayers were my parents also at the beginning yeah right so my parents are my haters Mm. my parents are people that were like listen like you know like i don't know how this is gonna work out you sure you want to do this they're just looking out for you yeah Yeah. exactly they're looking out for me so so it's like i'm kind of and that voice was also in my head because i've lived my life two different chapters of my life i lived up until i was 22 as being this follower as being this kid that was uh, that would follow up behind anybody that never thought he was a leader, was bullied, had like, you know, had asthma, never really athletic kid. And then after 22, just switched into this other other brand new guy. So there's still that old guy that sits, still sits in my head. That's like, dude, you ain't shit. shit yeah, You're yeah. going to get your ass kicked out yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. You're going to get beat. You're going to get embarrassed. What do you like? You know, like uh, the imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. Like I used to deal with that a lot. I still deal with it. Like, you know, like I don't deserve these things around me because mm. I never thought a guy like me could end up in the positions that I'm in. Right. So you have to it's uh, sometimes you're your biggest hater. You're yep. your biggest naysayer. Mm-hmm. And that's always but that still fuels me. I figure out a way to fuel that out of me. And that's always going to be a constant battle in your own head mm-hmm. that you always got to figure out. Yeah, yeah, I think the thing you kind of touched on that I think it speaks volume is I think it's Nick Saban who said it. Um, you know, they never look at the five-star recruit. They could care less if it's a five-star recruit. Mm-hmm. What do they look for? The characteristic and the attributes that person represent. Because mm-hmm. you can change, you can't change the who that person is, but you can make them better as a player. Mm-hmm. They always look for the characteristic who that person is. Even if it's a two-star recruit, he said, by the time you're done here, you're gonna be a five-star recruit, and you won't have one of the best sportsmanship. Whoever that that characterization of the person is what you should work towards. Right. Understand, yes, yeah, sometimes some people you do have that gift ability given to you where you are really good at something, but guess what? If that's not uh, utilized in a manner where, okay, I have this gift that I know that I can p- 
put forth in a positive manner. Mm -hmm. And the way I want to represent it should be inspiring others not to flaunt about it. You know, as you said, like people like if if they're looking up for to like Sean O'Malley, oh, I want to be around this, like these girls, oh, I want to be like, you know, Conor McGregor with the Lamborghini yard. I mm -hmm. if, you, if that's what you're striving towards, I think that's a flawed mindset because those will, things will come as success comes. Mm -hmm. But that can't be your initial thought process yeah. when you're going through that. And then I think another thing you touched on was the hardship at the beginnings. Because mm. as we know, everybody killed Dana White for this. Man, none of these fighters are making anything. Mm. Uh, and well, you're still, still and, and still <laughs> not, <laughs> right? Still like the, not. If what people don't realize is they see these UFC fighters, oh, they're making a lot of money. But if you look at the bottom line, the, the bottom mm -hmm. tiers, how much are they making? If yeah. like, how much are they making? I have no, I don't know. How many oh, they're they? making probably eight and eight. Like see, 8, 000, yeah, 8, 000. A fight, 15% right? goes to your manager. And your coaches. goes to your coaches. <laughs> your nutrition. Or, you know, yeah, see, yeah, people don't realize, as you said, there's going to be times in your life when you're starting on something where you really believe in. Mm -hmm. And as you said, you're sitting by yourself with your own mental thought process. Like, am I really built for this? Mm -hmm. Like, am I really f willing to forego the cost of knowing that I might not actually make it? Mm -hmm. You know, because that, that mentality, because you got to have that thought process to yourself. Be like, yo, if I really want to do this, it got to be, it got to start from here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not about, oh, you know. You know, let me try it out. No, there is no trying out. And mm -hmm. that's what we fail in society today. We try to babies people feeling like, oh, you try this all. No, fuck that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you really want to focus on something, man, give it your all. Don't go like halfway in, six months in, man, shit is hard. Let me try something else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you working towards? You yeah. just want that validation from people be like, oh, yeah, he tried, he's doing this and that. Like, you're the master of all trades, but mm -hmm. you're good at nothing. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, it's like, so I think it, it, it kind of puts it in perspective that, you're not going to have that initial success. As mm -hmm. you said, you're going to be, you were what, months behind in your rent. You, mm -hmm. you don't know how much money you're going to get from fighting. You don't know, yeah. you know, whether you actually make it one day to the point where you're like, you know what, I can sit back and be like, I'm thankful that I did this. For well, first you know? 11 fights, I didn't even get paid. See, there so you go. For, and those were all amateur fights and didn't even, didn't even make money. I, I, I was paying to fight. Yep. And then, so now you're foregoing all that cost. Now, as when you turn pro, my first pro fight, I got 500 to show, 500 to win. Crazy. What's that going to pay you? There's nothing, right? man. The second fight you. was, like, I don't even care about talking about it at this point. It's like, <laughs> I think it was probably a 1,000 to show, 1,000 to win. Crazy, yeah, from man. Like, I'm, eight, I'm 18 and 3 now, so it's been a lot of fights ago. Yeah. But, yeah, it was like, like, what are you supposed to do with that? Exactly. Yeah. Like, you ain't doing nothing. Right? So, I was bouncing <laughs> at light clubs on the weekend. I was like, you know, and then I trained. Like, during the Olympics, I was bouncing and stuff, like, when the Olympics were going on yeah. here. And even a week before my title fight, um, I got pepper sprayed at work. What the hell? And shit. I still wouldn't pull out. <laughs> and uh, like I was like, and it went right down my lungs and everything. And it was Jeez. like, and yeah. I got hit hard with it. And I'm still like, I gotta win this belt because this is what's gonna o open up opportunities for me. Yeah. And uh, the money that I made off of that, the Ultimate Fighter Show allowed me to go mm. try out in New Jersey. But they, but I had no pro fights at that time. Oh. I was O and O. And they're like, they needed a three fight. Minimum. minimum to go yep. mm -hmm. but they still the producer still allowed me to come down so mm -hmm. i was front row for john jones versus shogun Crazy. when john jones won oh, the belt shit. i was there uh <laughs> yeah. next to uh iced tea and coco <laughs> like I, was, uh, I was on camera <laughs> it was dope, man. and then they let me try out and it was uh they had just introduced 135 and 145 to the ufc before there it was only in wc WZF. which was another promotion mm -hmm. So there was over 800 to 1,500 guys that showed up, which was one of their biggest turnouts. Mm -hmm. And guys with the minimum record were 6-0 and and everything. They're like, we just can't justify 0-0 guy going on here. They're like, you got the talent. You definitely do. Mm -hmm. But we just can't justify a guy with no pro fights because we we never had this kind of talent Tenfold, show up yeah. from around the world, from all the different like promotions from Rise in Japan and everything. All these guys flew in trying yeah. to get their opportunity. But that was me, once again, using the – few dollars I made from sponsors to fly myself out there and go yeah. try out for the show, mm. put myself up in a hotel and stuff like that. And, and so it, these are those things I just had to take chances on. And that's yeah. not cheap, man. Like you taking your risk at yourself, knowing yeah. the outcome could be not what you expect, but it's a dream that keeps right? you alive. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. what could be on the other side of this? Exactly. What could be on the other side of this? And, and that's how, that's how dreamers, entrepreneurs, uh, what are, whether you're a professional fighter, whether you're a startup business guy, whether you're a podcast, it's what could be on the other the side, side. If yeah. I can just invest in it, there may be nothing on the other side. And mm. a lot of times there, there that, that can end up that yeah. way. But there also can be the what ifs. What if this works out? Yeah. What could be? What could this open up? Right? What? Where could? Where could I be a year from now? Yeah. Right? And 
there's a lot of times I look back on my life like a year from the point that I was. I'm like, holy crap. Why could I never That's imagine? That's a crazy like, trajectory. Yeah, 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 like crazy. Like people I'm surrounded by, the contacts I have, yeah. the people that I can just reach out to like that, the things that I've witnessed and stuff like that, the people that I can just call friends now or teammates that <laughs> I was sitting at like, like, you know, at a sports bar watching on watching TV, TV and yeah. now they're the guys that use me as a trainer and I use them as a training partner. Like, you know, like all these kind of things. It's, sense, it's yeah. it, The journey is pretty wild sometimes, right? Well, actually all the time. It is. Yeah. But that's the, that's the thing about even just talking about entrepreneurs or whatever, whatever it may be. Like entre- a lot of people see that entrepreneurs is just the one business that have succeeded. Mm-hmm. What they haven't seen is the amount of business that failed, that failed. and constantly been at it. And, even today's world, I mean, it's completely different now, but there's so much that's going on social media. There's so much distractions. Like kids these days, they have like a swivel on their head. Mm-hmm. They can't put their head down. They can't get work done. Yeah. You know, kids are, I mean, yeah, sure. Like enjoy life, but you know, make sure it's within means, right? Like yeah. within, within control. And it's just like a lot of these kids are trying to run, run away from reality. Social media also doesn't show the real process. They don't. Yeah. Right. It's it true. doesn't show you the process. It shows you that. 18 year old that was driving the Lambo no. and flashing the cash and doing this. I, they don't show you the process. Yeah. Right. Like, like, like I actually just saw this the other day. There's a guy like, you know, I trade stocks and stuff too. And there was this kid. Well, I'm not even going to say kid. He's <laughs> 19, 19, 20 years old. Yeah. And, um, um, he's, he's always on TikTok. He's always on Instagram flashing. Like, you know, I hit this, I hit that. I, 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 I made this much today. Mm. And someone, so he took a picture in front of a house and someone pulled it up on Zillow. Oh, it's an Airbnb <laughs> rental. It's an air, it was never his house. Oh, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. it was basically all BS, but then there'll be some kid that'll be like that will never understood. There's a process to everything. Mm-hmm. Like it could take years to master anything years like yeah. if you want to master something truly it is going to take years mm-hmm. unless you're just extremely talented but if you are extremely talented chances are you're lazy Le- because yeah. because talented people are it's it's very hard to find people that are talented and yeah. also want to have the work ethic because yeah. they ride off their talent yeah. khabib was actually just talking about this the other day and khabib was like i don't like to surround myself with talented people I'd mm. rather surround myself with hard workers. Hard workers and I yeah. totally True. understand that because in the mixed martial arts world, I see that more than anything. Mm. I see the guy that can come off the couch six, seven months in, just jump into camp and just like, you know, just ride off his time. But then there's that kid who never like, you know, he's living in like a trailer and stuff like that, but he's in the gym, yep. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., mm-hmm. barely getting a chance on the fight shows. No one's going to really see him or anything, yep. but he'll kill putting in the time, and I'd rather train with that guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, their right. camps are no joke, man. I see some of the Khabib's cab in Dagestan, man. Oh, yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. And we get a lot of the Dagestanis come in into our Vegas gym, and it's oh, it's shit. it's dangerous, man. Like, I, like, a lot of people don't understand, majority of the injuries, the serious injuries that happen, don't camps. happen in the fight. They happen in the training camp. Yeah. All my serious injuries, my I tore my ACL last year, day before I was about to fly out for my fight, my last <laughs> sparring session. I've had fractured my orbital completely, almost lost my eye. If it wasn't for the Holy. big bridge in my nose, my eye got <laughs> saved because of that because some guy stuck his knee out, flew into it, cracked my whole eye. I've gone, like, you know, the amount of, like, that's just two serious injuries, but I've gone stitches, cuts, and everything. But as far as when it comes to... An actual fight, I probably got two fights where I had to get stitches out of 36 fights I've had altogether. Mm -hmm. So, like, (laughs) by training, you're sparring three times a week, three sessions a day. It's way more dangerous training. And people don't realize that how dangerous training really is for MMA. Like, it's Mm -hmm. if you can't mimic the fight, then how are you going to adjust to it when you get on the kid? You have to see all the all the situations before um, you ever get to the situation. That's the only way you find comfort and any of this chaos that you're involving yourself yeah. in. You know, it's so true. You know, uh, the thing that you said, how you guys were fighting and, you know, crossing the border and taking these fights. You know, even if you look at, like, Masvidal and all these, remember when uh, Kimbo Slice? Yeah, the backyard he fight. Started Kimbo making, Slice, yeah. He, yeah. he started making yeah. that famous for kids that didn't have that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Come on. Show what you got. There, there's no weight division. There's no... I think there was weight division eventually. They started off just as there. just... Yeah. It's not like any yeah, of before, us. Yeah, before... <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, just do like 300 pounds. They probably pound. had in the kitchen and stuff. Not like that. Yeah, yeah. But like, people don't realize that's where he started. How many yeah. fights did he have? I think he's in Miami at the time he's living in. But nobody talks about that. Nobody yeah. knows about that. They're like, oh, this guy is just... He's arrogant. He's this, that. But guess what? He... How did Dana find him? Yeah. Mm. Through those yeah, backyard fights. Through fights. He yeah. saw, he's like, oh shit. He's like, I think I see talent in this yeah. guy. But yeah. And that's what that's what I tell people. No matter where you are, no matter what sports you're in, what business setting you in, carry yourself to the utmost, 
you know level that you can mm -hmm. you know i i tell one of my um one of the youngest, uh, Herbie, uh, Mok knows him too. Uh, mm -hmm. um, nine, what is he, 17 now? He's 17. 17 I tell him, yeah. I'm like, man, no matter what game it is, <clears> give <throat> it to y'all. Don't go in half ass. But like, you don't know who's going to be there. Mm -hmm. You don't know a recruiter from yeah. a U of A is going to be there or, you know, a, um, a top talented prospect that they could look at. Mm -hmm. Be like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, this kid got that. But imagine if he just half assed it, be like, oh, this game don't mean nothing. There was actually a situation that happened at our gym with that at Extreme in Vegas. So, during COVID time, um, because it was really hard to fly anybody in for yeah, fights yeah. because uh, of the travel COVID restrictions, yeah. mm -hmm. the Apex, the UFCPI is like down the street from us. So, all, all the fights, T Mobile is like 10 minutes down the road. And then the UFC Apex, where they hold like the smaller cards every week, like there was one this morning, yeah. um, was there. There was a Japanese kid that I was uh, training with, didn't speak any English. Me and him were moving, we're sparring and stuff like that. First, they came to me and they're like, um, Can you fight this Saturday? I'm like, Dude, oh, I'm under no. contract. Yeah. I'm, I'm under contract with one. They asked him, he wasn't. They signed oh, him shit. on the spot after the practice <laughs> of us just moving around. They brought in a translator, translated to him. The kid's <laughs> on a five fight win streak right now. That's the UFC crazy. has a flyway. They signed him just watching us moving around. Yeah. Just happened to be there, but it was putting it, putting him the effort. Yeah. Me and him were drilling hard. We we're going hard. And just the right guy happened to be sitting in the stands. It was a, a manager who they had just come in last 20 minutes of the practice. And we're looking for a guy that just fell out of the fight. And the guy jumped in, jumped in yeah, and, and it opened up his whole window. You yeah, never sure. know. Yeah. Right. And that, that right there, like, look at that. Changed his whole life, his whole pay scale, everything. Mm. Just came down from Tokyo, just like as a tourist just to train tourist, for yeah. the week. Mm. <laughs> and now he's on the How UFC. Crazy is yeah, that? It's, uh, I, and I've seen a few of those situations happen. It's, it's not a rare one, especially during uh, the COVID time. If you were training in Vegas and you were on these smaller shows, local shows, you had a very high chance of getting signed to the UFC because they needed guys at that time because they couldn't fly in anybody. All the borders were shut down yeah. and, they, and Dana wanted to get the UFC going. Mm. So a lot of guys from my gym, a lot of teammates of mine got opportunities and got signed. Mm. Yeah. And it was wild to see. No, that's crazy, Mac. And that's what I tell people, man. Stay ready all the time. Mm -hmm. um, work on your character development in regards to having that mindset. No matter what room you walk in, mm -hmm. man, learn how to articulate yourself, you mm -hmm. know? Learn how to carry yourself in all settings, you know? L read the room you're walking into, yeah. you know? Don't act like a hooligan because in our community, man, these days, it's sad to see how many people, like, I don't know the scenes in Vancouver, but you see what's been promoted on your social media and stuff mm -hmm. is what is promoted man you got i got i got girls i got bottles i got this i got that mm -hmm. what in the fucking world are we talking what, what yeah, is yeah. going on yeah. you know what i mean like we, well we promote a fast life right yeah. like like almost everybody i'm around like outside of the fight game because the fight game will teach you everything's a slow process yeah. mm -hmm. but everything outside if it's if I need a guarantee that this will work out or I'm not going to commit myself to it. Yeah. Mm. Right. It's like, I've, I'm only going to commit to this business plan. If I, you can guarantee that there is success at the end of this, yep. I'm not taking chances on it. Right. So when you have that mindset, that's Anything the mindset that people are, people are not willing to take chances, yep. not, not willing to fail because they're not seeing failure really kind of shown anywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. They're not shown the process. Like I say, I, I, I come back to the process of things. Um, I've been in the game for 15 years, so let's times that three sessions a day, 15 years. Mm. 15 years, right? Inside 21 it. fights in between that time. Yeah. Obviously, life has <laughs> happened in between that yeah, time, yeah. too. There's, it's not like I just got to be at the gym all day. Like, life <laughs> happened, things yeah, happen, shit happened, like, you know, things, and you family, have to adjust, and you, move, that, you yep. have to move around, things up, family, you lose people, you gain people, yep. like, you know, things happen, tragedies happen, like, you know, life happens. Yeah. And you have to figure it out as it goes. That's not a full, it's not a perfect process and everything. Yep. And um, that that's one of those things. Everyone's kind of wanting something quick and it has to be perfect. And it has to show up at my door real quick. quick I need yeah. a Lambo. If I'm going in on this, <laughs> there has to be a Lambo at the end of yep. this, yeah. this project. If I'm going to go and learn stocks, there better be a million dollars in my bank account by the next month because that's what I'm going to hit. Right? <laughs> we were right? just talking about right? this. <laughs> right? I'm going to hit a 10,000% option. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. right? And then that's it, right? <laughs> See, we, we all have that, right? Yeah. yeah. And like, there was a period for that, right? There uh, there was a GameStop era and we were all, I know. Like, I was definitely part of it, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely that. But that's a very rare thing. And like, Let's take uh, the crypto for for example right now. Yep. Mm. I was telling people for the past two two the and a half years. The bull runs coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I was helping. I was guys, 
keep putting like $500 from your bank account. Yeah. Just buy something, $500, $500, <laughs> right? But because I was saying it was two, two and a half years down the road, it, w- it was, it was, it, it wasn't possible. Yeah. It wasn't mm. worth it, right? Now, if we're jumping from 25K to 60, <laughs> Crazy. right? And Crazy. now everyone's like, should I get should it? I, yeah, should then I, I, I want to yeah. get it now. But like, right? what's the point now? So that's one of those <laughs> things where it's like, the when it's a delayed gratification, mm-hmm. we don't know delayed gratification. Our, this new generation doesn't, a lot of them, including a lot of people around us, right? Yeah, so don't know delayed gratification that you have to be patient. You got to put on work without seeing results. Yep. Mm. And you just got to keep showing up. It's like, you know, like, you know, me as a fighter, I can put in three sessions every single day. Yeah. Only day that's really going to count for me is the fight day. Fight day, mm-hmm. yeah. And I could weave one way, dodge the other way, and there's a kick waiting. And I would like, you know, that's just how it plays out. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it's a delayed gratification. I can put in everything possible that I want. And I have to rely that it's going to work out on that day. Yeah. yeah but yeah. then we also live in a place where it's like, dude, I'm not putting in all that time unless I'm guaranteed a victory, victory in life. Yeah. Yeah. I better be guaranteed that mm. this is going to work out at the end. And this goes for anything, not just MMA business or anything, yeah. right? I want to be guaranteed. And that that's the thing. So you're not going to get a lot of people taking a lot of chances, and mm. but they're going to watch everybody else uh, strive and, mm-hmm. and kind of get to higher places. And then they're going to jump in on something real quick, thinking it's going to make get them there and it never works out works because it never works out but adding on true to, i was no, just no, gonna go say i was just adding on top of that is also sacrifice mm. not many people are willing to sacrifice like partying you know <coughs> going going out with friends and all that stuff yeah. especially you know i mean of course you know well enough like as an athlete you're putting in three times a day going to the gym doing yeah. all this sort man like you have to make sacrifice and people the problem with people today they're afraid to t- make that sacrifice because they feel like they're just gonna be they're not going to have that support with those friends that always go out. Right, right. right. Yeah, well, 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 sacrifice comes in so many different, different forms, forms too, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, sacrifice. Like some people can't give up their favorite food yeah. mm-hmm. because they got to go into camp, right? Yeah. Um, some guys can't give up. Like, you know, like, like for myself in Vegas, I, there's a certain balance that I have. And for me, it works for me, but it doesn't work yeah. for everybody, yeah. right? Like I will train three times a day for six, seven days straight. But mm-hmm. I need one day to go out because mm-hmm. I have to mentally reset or I burn out. And that's just how I am. I just know that if I can get that one day out, like, you know, go out, like whether it's a club or something, like I, I straight up say, like yeah. if to go out it mentally resets me because I'm not around fighters. I'm not around. I'm not around uh, buzzers and coaches yeah. yelling instructions. I'm in like normal society. Now I've kind of seen it. Now I can go right go back I and I can it, yeah. go away. I have to do that during camps and that's, and I know GSP, all these guys, like I've been around them, they do it and they do it more than one day mm-hmm. and look where they got it. It's, you got to have control on it though. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. There, there's a certain control. You can go into clubs, go, go ahead, but there's a certain control on it too. Control, yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's a certain thing, like, I'm not saying like cut off all, all, all pleasure in life mm-hmm. because what's the point of that yeah. too? Yeah. Right? Live it up. And, yeah. and, and there was many years where I did do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's why I'm able to do certain things a bit more relaxed, but I'm still, I still grind. I still push, yeah, push I, I still push through it, but there's sacrifices. Like, you know, the amount of weddings that I've missed of my own closest friends, hmm. the amount of birthdays I've missed, the amount of like, you know, like, you know, certain family moments and stuff like that. Kobe used to say this. He's like, there's all these moments that you're going to miss. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the in-betweens, like, you know, maybe you miss your first, your kid's first step or Step's something yeah. like that. Right. Something. Mm-hmm. But the people that are going to ride with you are going to ride with, you are going to know, mm-hmm. like, you know, the end goal of this, you're not doing this because it's, there isn't a higher purpose for this. This is what your purpose is. This, this it way is what yeah. it takes. Right. So the r- people that are real with you and ride with you will, will understand it. Understand, for people yeah. that don't, it doesn't really matter. Cause you're not, you're, you don't really care for that yeah, anyways exactly. and you don't get it right <laughs> yeah. so so it's it's one of those sacrifice comes in so many different forms and you're always as you get older and so there's sacrifice to change mm-hmm. right before me like when i was by myself they were something completely different mm-hmm. now i have a wife i'm at home and i'm away from home i'm away from her yeah. there's a lot of moments that are lost in between there because Yo, i'm in vegas and she, right so there's a lot of things that other couples are doing that we can't do because i'm I'm on my path and she's supporting me alongside with it mm-hmm. and where That's we are huge. missing certain moments. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like, there's all these, there's sacrifices change yeah. as they go, but for all dreams, for all things, 
it's a need necessary it's, it's necessary. very necessary it's yeah. very necessary right and then you know one thing i kind of admire about what you just said is uh before early we we're talking about um about sikhi mm-hmm. the warrior mentality good thing is man i feel like now more days um we're straying away from it mm-hmm. you know like personally like i take pride you know um about sikhi you know when i tell people i'm like yo this it, it's not even the representation that i wear a pug it, it has nothing to do with it it's just like you could not have a pug but guess what you you still have that mental fortitude you know what like this is what our heritage is mm-hmm. this is what our people went through too for us to wear this man yeah. mm-hmm. and what i feel like nowadays is like people don't even care you know and and for you to represent it to the highest level and you carrying it on your back and showing people like hey this is a that's part of us, man. Mm-hmm. If we don't carry it forward to the, you know, the next generation, who will? And, you know, and it's inspiring to see, you know, even if like small things like, you know, hey, you, you're coming out with the song to say the Musewala, you know, mm-hmm. and you're coming out to that. It's like, it's some, I'm not really like, you're going to think it's like, it's it corny, but it gives you goosebumps. Of course. Yeah, yeah, On that yeah. level, you see someone who's walking, I said the Musewala and that arena's packed and you walk and it gives me goosebumps. Right. And I'm like, damn, man, like, I'm proud to see that brother, like, doing what he's doing at mm-hmm. the highest level mm-hmm. while representing our people. Right. And, and, and that's what it is. It's strength for me. Right. Like, like I said, the vision is what carried me through. Mm. The vision was to represent my people. Mm. The vision was to represent exactly what my parents taught me. Like, like, like my parents never told me to wear a turban or anything. Yeah. Right. And which, but they taught me the strength of my identity yep. mm. and that identity. I don't think they would have ever thought that I would piece that and bring it into MMA because mm. like nobody thought I would become that. Yeah. And like, you know, I, like I went to a sick youth camp and this is where it all started. So I was with these Atkan masters from the UK <laughs> and they're the ones who just kind of lit this fire. Not even, none of us knowing where any of it, and they showed me how to move the shusters and everything. And when I was given it, it was like, it was part of my DNA and I just mm-hmm. knew how to use it. Mm-hmm. And from there, I left from there and there was just crazy fire inside of me. And then I went back to normal society, like, you know, and I'm just, I'm going back to my accounting. I'm going back to normal day to day. I'm like. Dude, but that fire that lit inside me, like, what am I supposed to do, do with it that? now? Yeah. Like, what do I do? And then I went to, like, Odoara, and they had Gatika classes Tuesday, Thursday. I'm like, okay, it's great to learn this, but when am I going to get to Good use up. this? Like, yeah. when do I get to, like, what am I going to do? Gonna walk out in the streets this. of Surrey with a saucer <laughs> and just <laughs> yeah, yeah. crime and stuff, right? <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? And then that's where MMA came across, came across me. Came across, yeah. Across, yeah. And I'm like, and I started Googling. I'm like, is there anybody, is there anybody of my like of my heritage doing this no, no one yeah. okay well we're taught to be warriors yeah. i have this fuel inside me i feel like i can i can become <laughs> this guy there's something definitely going let's see where it goes mm. and from that it just had to and then so the day i decided it after i found the gym um i went to the godwara and i just sat there for a good hour hour and a half or so and I was like, I don't know what this journey is that I'm about to go, but just give me strength 24 hours at a time. Mm-hmm. Because once again, sometimes what we do is it's good to dream big, but sometimes it's the smaller goals every day that piece it together. Because, yeah. Right? You wake up every day and you piece it, you piece it, you piece it, you piece it. I started thinking about making it to the world, like, like you know, make it to the UFC, one championship, like wherever I want to make it. And the goal feels very far away and it can be, and it's not as motivating because it feels so far, so far away. away mm-hmm. yeah. But if I can piece it one little thing at a, at a time, that's one day right. at a time, and that's what I told myself, let me build my spirit 1% every single day. Yeah. And it was a quote that I always say, and, and, and GSP says this too, if you can become 1% better every day, then in a year you're 365% yep. better than you were the year before. Yep. Whatever way, it doesn't. It can be skill, it can Small be spirit, things. it can be mentality, yep. it can be whatever it is. But three now times 365% times 15 years, and this is who I've become today. Yep. Mm. Right? This is from the guy who didn't know how to throw a straight punch, didn't know how to take a punch, didn't know how to throw a kick, didn't know how to do a takedown, didn't know how to wrestle, didn't know how to had no conditioning no endurance that's all those 365 percent added up over 50 years Mm -hmm. 15 years that made me who i am today and through that the thing that carried me is my sikhi heritage because i would read about um uh like you know the battle of judge jump the The battle of jump was one of the most Mm. powerful things that i came across that guided me in my first, like in my early years. I used to play Battle of Jump Gore by Mortal Productions, yeah, yep. <laughs> like nonstop. I would drive to the gym playing this because when they did the Gatka demonstration, that was what was playing. Mm. I was like, what is it? And I listened to the story and I listened to what they were explaining about the yeah. battle and stuff. I'm like, what? 
like this is me like mm-hmm. you know because i'm considering that my dna is the same, same thing, thing right yeah. and then um like you know the sacrifice of the son sacrifice like you know all these things i'm like what am i worried about sacrificing to be alone yeah. like what am i like you know so i draw i drew i drew a lot of strength from all that stuff and i because i was like i told you in those first early years i was spending a lot of time on myself mm-hmm. so it's a lot of like just like reflection when when you don't really have anyone else's voice kind of coming in yeah now you're just creating this movie of a, of a movie in your own head right you're just creating you can make yourself believe whatever you want to make yourself believe because there's nobody else to really break, break yeah, to, yeah. to kind of snap you out of that mm-hmm. like you know people say they live in a fairy tale world right that was my fairy tale world that mm-hmm. i was this warrior that i was this 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 that this soldier that's going to go and represent his people. And I was going to go in the cage and take out people from all different nationalities. that told me that I couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. And what have I done? That's exactly yeah. what I've done. Yeah. Yeah. But at that time it was like this crazy dream. That's like, no, you tell the story to <laughs> nine out of 10 people. They're just going to laugh at you and be like, where can I rent this movie? Because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not real. Yeah, right. Not real, so, yeah. but I'm living the very movie that I created in my head hey, that yo. I manifested. Mm-hmm. And that's all that, but it was always fueled by, my DNA of knowing where I came from. And yeah. that's what it feels. That's why when I get to that gate, I get to my knees and I pray every single time before I enter my battlefield. Every mm. single fight I've done that. Ever since day one, since like my amateur days, I've done that. Mm. Um, and I do the same, like I say the same thing. I say, I, like I say, give me strength to overcome the challenges. Do not do not beat my opponent, but give me the skills to overcome my opponent. Yep. Right? Because, mm-hmm. like, I always believe. I'm like, 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 people always thank God in the cage and stuff. I'm like, why would God choose you over him yeah. to beat him? Like, mm-hmm. I thought there's all equality, yeah. right? Yeah. But God can give me the strength to overcome my challenges and overcome to overcome the opponent. opponent. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So it's like, it's all me to beat him. Yeah. But he's giving me the strength throughout this camp to get through this, yep. right? But he's not going to be going, all right, I'm going to flip a coin or uh, I pick St. Lion <laughs> and win this one, right? I don't believe that's how it goes down, yeah, yeah. right? It, he, that guy sacrificed. That guy probably left his family. That guy probably has kids to feed. That Like, why, why am I anything better, yeah. right? So I have to figure out the resources that I need to beat my opponent. But we have both made it there. And I always say keep us both healthy, like both of us. And yeah. every opponent that I've had, I've always become friends with after. Yeah. Right. Like there's no enemies in that cage. That that's another thing with mutual made. respect. There's mm-hmm. no enemies. Like yep. there, you know, I've never looked at my opponent as an enemy. I've looked at a as an obstacle that I have to overcome in order mm-hmm. to proceed up the ladder that I'm trying to get to. Yep. But there is no, uh, there's no enemies of I it. Mean, actually, the greatest respect I have in the arena for anybody in that arena is for the, the person fighters, standing across because I know yeah. what it takes to make yep. that walk, yeah. to m- climb up those stairs, lock yourself in a cage, hey. and. Basically, it's the most naked you can be in front of the world because yep. nothing is predetermined. Nothing, mm. right? It's uh, everything's in front of the world. A win and a loss in MMA are very clear cut, right? Yeah. You either won or you lost, and the whole world's gonna judge you by that, basically. Yeah. And you're willing to put yourself out there and take that chance. Yeah. And that takes a lot of balls, a lot of guts, and does, to do man. it over and over and over, over and over yep. takes a lot. To go through the process again, go through the process again, it takes a lot, man. Especially that's why if you meet some of the best world champions or like you know the um, like a lot of the UFC guys, a lot of the one championship guys, they're the most humble guys you can meet. You'd be mm. surprised. You'd be like, why are you so nice? Because they've been through the process so much Watch that up. they know not to get cocky. Always the cockiest ones, the ones that you have the most trouble with are mm. usually the amateur guys on the mm-hmm. local scene because they haven't been through the they're grind yet. Yeah. They haven't seen it yet. They, yeah. Their egos are inflated because they're, fight, they're winning these local fights around here. Fights, yeah. But once they step out of here, they realize they're a goldfish in a shark tank. Yeah. Right, and they it's a whole different thing. That was one of the things that I never allowed myself to kind of fall trap into. As mm. soon as I started seeing that everybody was coming up to me, go, Gary, you're the MMA fight. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, I was enough to know it's time for me to leave. Yeah. And that's when I packed my bags and went to Montreal. Too comfortable. Because mm-hmm. then I went into Montreal, and now you got now I'm sharing the gym with GSP, GSP and, yeah. all, and all these other guys. Yep. And I ain't shit. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, that was true. Right? Yeah. And, um, I, and it's that, a that Exactly. Be. And that's the same thing I get in Vegas every time I walk in the gym. Mm-hmm. Right? Different. I got like the who's who in there. I know. The whole world a, goes through yeah, that. You need an equal balance between e- having ego yeah. and being humble. Of but course. Y- but you, you need an ego in the game. You, you do. Need, you, you need ego. You do. Like people say, you. No, I'm, I'm not egoless, or I wouldn't be fighting. I think I'm the shit. Yeah. Like, when I go in a fight, I am 
that guy. I have to believe that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have yeah. to believe that, right? It's like McGregor. Yeah. Like, yeah. Think about what makes him great, what Dana White said. He's like, this ki- kid doesn't care. Mm-hmm. You name him the time and a place, he yeah. will be there. And people yeah. like think, oh, Dana just likes him. Like, no, nah, like... He puts in the put work. He put in the work. Yeah. Now he yeah. doesn't care about it because he, you know, he tamed the wealth. He, he want. He did what he wanted to do. Right. And now it gives him the option. Hey, when you die rich, you can do whatever the he hell you want. Course. You know. Yeah, so course. for he him, he achieved it, right? He yeah. unlocked the levels that he had to exactly. unlock. Exactly. But people don't realize, but like, you know, dreams without goals and action are just dreams. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. 100%. And people don't realize, as you said, it's that work ethic every day, man. You gotta, you gotta go through it, man. Like, it, you know, it's funny that you say about, like, you know, that 1% rule, but, like, it's true, because, like, you know, I came from India, you know, and me and Mo, we love playing basketball. That That's the first sport I looked at. I'm like, damn, I really love playing mm-hmm. this sport. But at the time, my dad's like, nah, like, basketball, they're like, <laughs> right, no right. chance, yeah. right? But then I'm like, nah, I, I like playing this. I'm gonna play it. No matter who shows up, I'm gonna do it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there was a point where, like, I was so bad. I, like, started up Right, and then I build my mental fortitude to a point. I don't care who I'm up against. Mm-hmm. If if me against him, I'm winning. I don't care. You play for Juve, Nova, Toronto yeah. University. I don't care who you <laughs> yeah, play yeah, for. Yeah. I know it's serious. Like yeah. I had this ego, as you say. Like I'm I'm gonna beat you. I don't care because mm-hmm. my mental fortitude is way bigger than I don't care what you've been through. But you're not gonna get through me. Right. And I feel like people need that. You gotta you gotta build up your ego yeah. to the point where like no one can break you. The moment mm. think the moment you think you look across your opponent, be like, I don't know, that's when you lose yourself. Yeah. yeah. So 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 one of the things that like you know a lot of sports psychologists like you know I've worked with sports psychologists and stuff like that is that you gotta tap into the dark side of you. So there's a dark side to everybody, especially if you're an elite athlete or elite business person. There's a dark. I'm, I'm not I'm not saying uh, I'm not saying an evil side of you, mm. but a dark side of you. Kobe had Mamba mentality. Mamba mentality. Tiger yeah. Woods had his. Um, everybody has a, a mentality that you got to tap into. Mm. And there's like, and you got to know when to turn it on and off. Yep. True. Right? True, true. Because <clears throat> the same dark side can get you into a lot of trouble in other places. Yep. Right? Like, you know, you got your John Jones who definitely had a, a dark <laughs> side, oh, but yeah. then couldn't control it. Yep. Right? You see a lot of like, you know, a lot of NFL players and stuff, especially the Raiders. Mm. Like, you know, like Vegas is a, a party, party city. Pa- yeah. Party city. Yep. They can get DUIs left, right, and center, right? And it's just like, you got to be able to control that dark side. Like for me, I can tap into it if I train it enough. And then luckily I have a wife that kind of like snaps Balances me out of it. Out. Oh yeah, when I come home, there's like, ain't no dark side over here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick Sit up the child. Yeah. Like, oh, right. How do you clean up? Right, it's done. And that's, that's it, right? Pick up the vacuum and when you're fighting, great. Yeah. The world's all, the world's all acknowledging you yeah. in jail, but, you know. In this house, like, you acknowledge yeah. me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna see the dark side of me if you don't get that, right? So it's like, it's a whole different thing. So I, I've been lucky in that sense where I've had somebody that always kind of keeps me grounded, even sometimes when I'm trying to like rebel against it because I'm like, I have to like, like, you know, I've been around the Conor McGregor's and stuff like that, and I know how his circle functions. They feed it. They yeah, feed it. They, they feed truly do. They, like, I'm actually, so they feed it. So they make him feel like a god all the time, and he never needs to kind of calm it down, right? So, mm. but then that can also get you into trouble. And you know, I'm dangerous. sure you guys know about a lot of stuff he got into, right? And everything. So, yep. so it's, uh, it's kids that had no money, now have all this money, but still, they still got their ways, mm. right? So you have to have a proper circle, whether it be one person, three, four people that can kind of ground you. But the ego is, I believe, is healthy to a point, especially for me in combat sports, um, tapping into that darkness. Yeah, like yeah. I have to like on fight week, me and my wife barely talk. I can't. There's <laughs> nothing. There's nothing I have to say to you. There's no conversation that you and me can have that's going to be sweet <laughs> and you're going to feel like you're romantic. You know, none of the, you're not getting that from me. Yeah. You're going to get three, four words out of me a day yeah. because yeah, I'm, no. somewhere, I'm checked out somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. I'm somewhere else. I'm ready to, like, you know, in my head, I'm ready to rip a man's head off. Head off, yeah. Right? And I'm about to, or he's going to do it to me and it's going to go and happen in front of the world. I'm going to do it in tight shorts, yeah. half naked in front of the world, <laughs> and that's what it's going to be. Right? It's, it's going to be a very, it's, it's, it's going to be, like, like that's the experience right? <laughs> and so, so it's a whole different it's a whole different thing and but once it's over i gotta put it to the side Side, yeah. and for me since camps are so long sometimes like you know like they can be eight weeks i've been in that mindset so long it's om- it almost takes me three four weeks when i come back home to transition back into normal society, society. Yeah, yeah actually it's, there's like ptsd like i 
Like, you know, like, I don't know how to feel emotions properly mm. because I've shut them off. I'm around a gym where you can't be crying to your coach because some guy kicked you. Like, they don't care. You yeah. got to kick punches straight to the face and have a poker face. Like, you know, like, that's what eight weeks of training is, right? Yeah. You're training. You're, you're your own boss for eight weeks trying mm. to get yourself to show up every day, three times a day, sweat, blood, injuries, whatever's yeah. going on, whatever's hurting. And then all of a sudden you go back into society and someone's sad but they're showing you that they're happy and something where you're supposed to figure out that they were sad, sad yeah. you're like i don't even understand this world because i don't <laughs> i don't, I don't know how to like function yeah, everything's yeah. so clear cut to me everywhere else yeah. yeah right and so like for me turning on emotions again has been one of the hardest things coming out of a fight mm. out of a fight camp even um it's always turning because i've shut that part of me off so much to not feel anymore yeah and it, it, it can take time and sometimes it doesn't even turn on like you know like it's like, I don't know how to show nothing. Like, I'm happy to be here, but you might not see me smile the whole time I'm here. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? And you're like, like, I just, like, it's, it's, it's like, there's like a give and take on that where there's like, it's like, it's not, it's not good not yeah. to show emotion. Mm. But in my world, it is good not to show it's emotion. emotion. Yeah, yeah. Right? You don't show that you've been hurt. You don't show that you're down. You don't show that you're in pain. You don't show emotion. It's a very like it's a different world. So. For you guys, it's like a sense of like, oh, it's a he's vulnerable. It's yeah. like it's like yeah, you know, exactly. it's like a, it's like it's like you're praying. At, it's like someone. It's like you know, you're in the jungle. Mm -hmm. The moment the opponent sees you weak, exactly, is kill or be killed. Yeah. And the moment they realize that, yeah. they're gonna jump on you. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah. And Easy it, target. and as you said, it, this world, you can be up here one day. Yeah. And the next day you can wake up, you'll be down there because it's yeah. it's a quick. Hey, if you're not willing to put in that work, hey, yeah. on to the next one. Yeah. That's how that world works, you and know. There's so many like inner battles inside of you that you don't even know how to yep. really, because because it's not like you're. It's just happening in training. It's happening when I'm sitting at home. home yeah. It's happening when I'm waking up in the morning because mm. all I'm thinking about is an opponent. All I'm thinking about is what is he doing? What's going to happen? What's I know. Gonna, am I doing <laughs> enough? Like it's a constant. Like, the way that I feel after a fight is I always say that it's like a thousand pounds got lifted off. If you won, it feels like a thousand pounds got lifted off your shoulders. It's <laughs> weird. Your appetite comes back because your appetite's been surprised for eight weeks because you just up. had your stomach and not. You ever had butterflies for eight weeks straight? Most people have them for 10, 20 minutes for something. Mm -hmm. But in a camp, I'm so nervous for eight weeks. Sometimes I have butterflies the entire time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have high anxiety the entire eight weeks. Mm -hmm. Like middle of the night i'll wake up just freaked out yeah. like it happens all the time like you're just like and you're just questioning why the hell am i doing this, doing this yeah. yeah like like you like five minutes before every fight i walk out i'm like i should have seen the count <laughs> what the hell am i doing i could have yeah, been yeah. at home watching <laughs> this guy fighting instead i'm the guy that's about to do this yeah. it's like i go through that same i go like the process like of getting on the bus to the arena and then getting off the bus on the arena all these things, like, it gives me nightmares sometimes because mm -hmm. I've done it so many times and I know what I feel when they call you to your hotel room and be like, hey, meet in the lobby and tell me. Because like, you know every second you're getting closer and closer to mm. war. You're getting closer and closer to war. Like, it's guaranteed war is coming <laughs> to your door. Like, you know, when you see somebody street fight, it can happen randomly. randomly you could be drunk yo. and a fight oh, yeah, ends yeah. in 20 seconds. But when you have signed a contract eight weeks out on this day, at this the hour, time. at this city, yo. yeah. you know it's coming. It's There's nothing avoiding you it. You can't avoid it. I'll yeah. be in the back. 10 minutes before a fight praying that an earthquake or something every <laughs> yeah. fight I've done it every, every fight I've done it and I actually yeah. found out a lot of other fighters do it I thought it was just me <laughs> a lot of fighters like dude I just pray like some sort of natural disaster just hits this arena yeah, and sure. we can just like pause this whole thing yeah. because the stress and the anxiety just mounts and mounts and mounts and mounts and it's mm. nuts when you're standing there 5 minutes before walking out and they're counting you down and they're counting you can hear your video and then for like you were saying I hear Sidhu Musa's song I'm like it's time Locked to in. go. Yeah, it's yeah. time to go. Yeah. And there's no turning back. Once you cross that current, one or two things are going to happen. Yeah, yeah. you're and coming out of Victoria. One or so two, exactly. Yeah. One or two things are going to happen. Yeah, yeah man. And, and that's what's the scary part is about combat sport because it's you mm -hmm. and the other person. There ain't no team. Yeah, the yeah. team's is no. behind, nope. the, you know, behind the footage, but like behind the scenes, we're leading up to it. You yeah. enter the cage, you know, as Mike Tyson said, everybody got a plan till you get hit, hit, mm -hmm. hit in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Everything yeah. goes sideways, you know, like we're, yeah. Lights are blinging, yeah, crowds yeah. cheering, like, yeah, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. hold yeah. on, what's going on? Who punched wild, me? Which one of y'all punched <laughs> me? You know, like, no, it's, it's yeah. real shit, no, though. Because, yeah. like, when you yeah. get hit, you're like, okay, I had the game plan. Like, I don't know what to do now. Yeah. You know, walk us through that mindset. Because, you know, as you said, you, you battled, 
you know, fair share of your injuries mm -hmm. and to still keep going, man. It's not easy. Like here, people like you, tear, you know, like you have a high sprained ankle in basketball. Like, man, uh, it's just that's why man. I can't like, like I love watching <laughs> basketball, but yeah. I can't take the foul seriously. Soccer, I especially <laughs> oh, can't sorry, say. Yeah. <laughs> like the way that they grimace in pain. I've yeah. never seen my team. I've had teammates straight liver shots where yeah, they yeah, like let me get you in a guillotine let and me i've get never you. seen them squirm around on the ground like how some of these guys in FIFA and stuff squirm around it's on a different level but as far as the skill goes i respect it to a whole different yeah. level but as far as the injuries and like the foul like like lebron james with his foul man acting, i love lebron but some of the stuff like, oh. like that's where that whole mj lebron combo for me ends right there yeah. right yeah. and i feel like, you on that yeah um yeah just like Almost every single one of my fights, I've had, I've had some sort of injury or something, mm. some sort of adversity. For me, it's almost kind of weird. And, and my wife tells me, she's like, you know what? Like, you need to stop thinking like it because you attract um, the negative, negative things to yeah. yourself. Yeah. If I don't have something wrong with me, I actually don't feel normal. <laughs> like, I don't feel like, like my, one of my fights for one championship, I was in the emergency tell. I think like 5 a.m. They were pumping my stomach because I got food poisoning after oh, my shit. weight cut. I caught something. Shit. It was in uh, in Myanmar, which is like there's third world countries and mm. then there's third world on top of third world. Uh, 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 Myanmar was yeah, Myanmar, and it yeah. was just next level, man. Mm. And I caught some bug and went into the fight. Not a single piece of food in my stomach. Jesus. Not because I was just puking everything out. Yeah, mm. got a dehydrated. Knock, knock the guy out. Um, then I've had fractured chest because in sparring, a guy did a spinning back kick, fracture my chest Ooh, and it's still <laughs> calcified. So every fight I go into now, my heart presses up against a calcification. Mm, so sheesh. now, yeah. So I deal with that. And then my ACL and then like, you know, I've had plenty of injuries. Yeah. If I feel hundred percent, I feel like I haven't trained hard enough. Yeah. I feel like I'm not really like, like, where was I? Like, I need to be broken. Like, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like how am I at this fight? hundred percent healthy. Like, what the hell was I doing for the last eight weeks? There's yeah. no way I should be 100% healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a that's a tough mentality to tap in. You have to, yeah. It, it's a weird, it's like, in unless you're in that game, it's hard for people to kind of be like. Understand that. They're like, yeah. yeah. 100%, 100%, man. It's 100%, yeah. Yeah, like, but, you know, I always hear some talk about roll his ankle. I'm like, dude, my ankle could be broken. I'll still go in the fight. Exactly. Yeah. I ain't pulling out. I'll go in the fight, man. Because yeah. you guys have to. You have to show. It's like, show out, go home. Yeah. And, and it's that day it, yeah. that's everything who you are and that's it that that's also the crazy thing about the fight game you don't get paid unless you show up show up yeah. Yeah. where you can be a professional basketball player and you can be on injury waiver man I'm so many dead. they be look at Ben Simmons man yeah. Dude, one day he's like I don't feel like playing yeah. what that mean they pay you 50 mil to <laughs> yeah, play exactly. what do you mean you don't feel like playing what does that mean no, <laughs> it's, it's a whole different thing man it, it's like in our world, we can't understand it. And we're like, you guys are so lucky to be in the position you guys are in. Because <laughs> yeah. like, so the higher true. we go, the harder it gets. And the there's no there's no safety blanket for us. Yep. Yeah. It's all, it, that's why, once again, I say the vision has to ride you through it. Yep. Because yeah. if it doesn't, you're just like, why am I doing this? Because you will eventually, you'll hit that, that wall many times where you'll question it all and be like, mm -hmm. what the hell am I doing? Because yeah. the guys that I started with, none of them are doing it no more. Yeah. The guys that uh, were after me, a majority of them are not doing it anymore. Yeah. Like to have lasted almost two two decades in this sport from the time that it wasn't even legal here. From like, you know, I started during the Chuck Liddell days. Jeez. And he's even retired now. Yeah. Um, now we got uh, like, you know, WEC was the only small one. Well, we well, now, yeah. now all those weight classes. So that's almost now that's almost four chapters of, of the MMA world. And now you got the next generation. I'm still here doing it, right? Yeah. Like I'm still in it. I'm still. It's because my vision always held me through, and it's just like I'm not done, yeah. right? It, it's like, yeah. I think you know, like just kind of like wrapping up everything. I think, mm. man, people should genuinely feel inspired by everything you've done. And and I don't mean this like you know just to like ride your cocktail or anything. But man, actually, like if you think about where we come from when it comes to like first migrant our parents they come here mm -hmm. you know it's a, it's not easy for them to see their kids be like nah i'm not i don't want to do a stable job i want to go into something that you know might not even give me anything you know right. they're like what are you going to do so you know i think people gotta understand just no matter what it is what you know setting you are business wise sports wise put your mind and will to it man I, I i tell people man there's nothing you can't accomplish you genuinely there's nothing if you set your mind to it mm -hmm. you genuinely can accomplish don't look at what other guy what he got what she got look at yourself 
Right. Look yeah. within, and I truly feel like you can accomplish whatever you want. And you know, wh- what would you say like this? You have like, one message. You would say like, okay, this is who Dashan Manga is. This is what I want to put out. Mm-hmm. What do you want your legacy to be like S- when they look back at your it, career it, and it, everything? It's not even the legacy. It's what I want to say is that everything has a process. Mm-hmm. Like, like you know, like you know how you <laughs> just said like whatever you put your mind to it and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's gonna be one ear out the other. Majority of the people that you are yep. mm-hmm. to, but where what we miss is the process. There's yeah. a process to this madness that you're about to embark on. Mm-hmm. Whether you're a business, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether the, there's 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 a process to this. That's what's gonna get you to where you need to get yeah, to. Yeah. Right? Believe in yourself. Believe you can do it. Believe that you are no different than the billionaires that you may want to strive towards mm-hmm. or the highest as you're the LeBron James if you're a basketball player yeah. or mm-hmm. like, you know, but understand there's a process to this all. Yeah. And you gotta have a vision that carries you through this process because you're going to have to love the process. And that doesn't mean every day when you show up to training, you're going to love being there. There's a lot of times I don't want to roll out of bed. I don't want to be there. I don't want to be part of it. I don't want to do a single round. I don't want to look at a gym. But there's a process to it all where you're not always going to love it, but you have to love the journey that you're on. For me, like, you know, at the time when I started and to look back at it now, forget the the fight record or anything for myself because i don't even like look at that as part of my legacy yeah. right because wins and losses are going to come and go yep. yeah it's about what i left as a way to inspire others to be like like I, I wish the one bit of service i can do is to let them know that there is steps to this whole game mm-hmm. yeah right there's steps to this thing you got it though to accomplish it there's gonna be steps there is no shortcuts to the top yep. and if there is a shortcut to the top and you figure it out you're not going to be at the top for very long because yep. mm-hmm. there's going to be some kid grinding that doesn't have talent, that doesn't come from shit, yep. that doesn't come from anything, that is hungry as hell, yep. and he is going to take you out spot. and never And he will you, take you out. He will, will take, take you out. Yep. And now, let's take the Khabibs and the Dagestanis, yep. for example. They're, they're running the game. Where nowhere. do they come from? <laughs> yeah. They don't come from anything. They, come, they come from hunger. They come from the mountains. They come from that. Look what they're doing right now. Yep. When I, like, my parlays, I will pick a Dagestani the <laughs> every time, way down, every yeah. damn time, because I've been around. I've been around these guys too, and I see the hunger. I see how they live. Uh, Khabib was staying at the Fairmont, and they were having troubles with the rooms. He's like, "Dude, I'll stay at a Motel Six. Yeah, I don't care. This guy's a multi-millionaire, <laughs> yeah. one of the greatest. Fight. It doesn't matter his humbleness and what he comes from. It does not make a difference. It's about what he's doing. How he's inspiring people with his message of who he is. He's, he's God sent to look like you know like." Like, I was at Arya, and I've never seen people show up for this guy, like how I've seen it. Like, the Muslim community, they showed really? up. And it was, it gave me goosebumps. It brought tears to my eyes, being a fighter and watching the way they were, like, mothers, daughters, Everybody sons, fathers, like, you know, just trying to get a glimpse of this guy, mm. right? And, like, it was just unbelievably powerful. And I bet you most of them couldn't name two of his opponents, <laughs> couldn't tell you his fight record. <laughs> couldn't tell you what his background in fighting is. It wasn't about that. It's what he's done. His to, impact uh, on society. The impact mm-hmm. he's had worldwide yeah. about wh- how he's used the platform he's on and how he's spread it and what he's spoken about and how he's spoken about the respect to his father yep. and how that's allowed parents to be like, look up to this guy. Yep. Made daughters, even daughters are being told, look up, to, look this up to this guy. guy. Right? Mm-hmm. Look up to this guy. Look how he talks about his mom and dad. Look mm-hmm. how he talks about his father. Look how he... He respects the mayor, even though his dad's not around anymore. Mm. He always stuck by it. Like, you know, like, that goes way further than anything else. That goes way further. No one's talking about his fight or Dustin Poirier win or yeah. his, what he did to Edson Barboza or Connor or yeah. anything. It doesn't matter. It's obsolete at that point. So legacy to me is what do I do with it? Yeah. Is it is is it is a belt needed to do what I, I, I need to do? Like, or do I use this platform and I can, like, you know, I can plant seeds Mm-hmm. That are gonna. I'm not trying to inspire the next generation of fighters. Just the next generation of dreamers and dreamers, people yeah. that are willing to understand what it takes to make a dream to reality. Mm-hmm. And whatever it may be, maybe you're a YouTuber, maybe you're a basketball player, yeah, maybe anything. you're a doctor, maybe you're yeah. a surgeon. You want to be the best surgeon. You want like you know, but to plant those seeds, yeah. right? And that's what it is. It's that's possible for for me. That's what legacy is. You do something like you, even if like I mean a lot of times right now like even people make excuses they don't have time. Yeah, you have time. You have time. E- even even <laughs> if you can do <laughs> like just time. everybody yeah, has time. time, man. It's just whether or not if you want to do the work. Yep. Even you if you're time. trying to be an entrepreneur, whatever it is, 
you have half hour, an hour a day. It yeah. just stacks up every day. Yeah. Like we were saying, 365, right? It stacks yeah. up every day. It just adds up. It's just whether or not if you have the patience, if you have the heart, if you're willing to... It's the patient, it's the mentality, mentality it's, the, yeah. it's the mental energy. It's usually not the physical energy, it's 100%. the mental energy. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Because we do live in a time where where things don't take a lot of energy anyway because we're consuming so, so we're not having to think too much. Yeah. Thinking takes power. Thinking takes brain power. Mm -hmm. Coming up with ideas takes brain the power. power. Yeah. And that is exhausting to the body. Yeah. Right? Where back like ten years back, it didn't take as much because our minds had this different endurance because we weren't consuming so much. Mm -hmm. We weren't consuming so much stuff because there wasn't as much stuff to watch. Much, and yep. uh, so, so we would sit around daydreaming without knowing we're daydreaming. Day yeah. Now what do we do when we're bored? Phone, I'll pull, I'll pull my phone. Like, and 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 I'm just as guilty of this. Yeah. Like, you know, I was standing in a bank lineup the other day. I'm like, remember ten years ago, you just had to stand here. <laughs> yeah. You just had to stand in this quiet spot. Yeah. And just think about crap. Yeah. And now, to kill the time, you pull out your phone to kill the awkwardness of yeah. whatever the silence you're surrounded by. <laughs> right. True, if you have true. any awkward conversation, you both yeah. just pull out your phone oh, and you're yeah. just like, okay, let's kill it. it never with happened. That. Yeah. yeah. Because that's that's your escape now, right? So we don't have the endurance in our minds anymore. Um, the way, like even for myself, like I, the way I used to have a 45 minute drive to the gym and the way I could come up with visuals, the mm. way I could create fight finishes and what I wanted to do and stuff like that was a lot different than how it is now where I really have to put on some cinematic mu music and it usually takes me 10 minutes to kind of warm my brain up to enter that place of manifesting. And then I start kind of seeing the process yeah. without interruption, yeah. but it, before it'd be like, let's go. Like I'm there. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when I go sit by the water, I was there. Yeah. Like, I never took no breathing. So I, was, I could just go there. But it's just the times that we live in now, right? Yeah, it's, it's just the way it the is, yeah. In, but it's all possible. It's all it very possible. And it's about where it starts up here and how you create it here and then it comes out here. Yeah, mm -hmm. remember what KG said after that finals, he won. Anything's possible, yeah, Anything's man. possible, yeah. <laughs> he screamed that to the and entire like, world. He also said, go up to the top of the world. <laughs> <laughs> You're a transformer. Yeah. Make a beeline for the highway. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you know, man, um, I genuinely want to say thank you, man. Uh, I appreciate thank you for it, taking your time out of your you day because we know it's valuable to you, man. You got a lot of stuff going on, but it means a lot to us, man. It genuinely does. To you guys too, man. Like, like I know you guys came in from Edmonton <laughs> and you guys had a process where you guys want to set this up and you guys are here, you guys are getting it up. That takes steps, mm -hmm. yeah. right? That takes steps. You had a vision about something and that takes steps, right? Yeah. And so you got to you gotta commend yourselves about it. You got to get roses where roses are. True. And you guys showed up and you guys set it up and, and we all we came here, together. Yeah, it's a beautiful you know? thing. It's a beautiful, yeah, beautiful thing. Definitely, right? definitely. We feel like, you know, even this podcast, where we, you know, we set up. <laughs> we feel like we're best friends with them. We met them like, yeah. right before the podcast Literally. started. <laughs> This is beautiful. This is beautiful. <laughs> He's signing up to an MMA gym. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's like inspiring, yeah. Process, you're, you're talking about, like, you're just talking about, like, on the beach, just, you know, sitting there. By yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. just like, you know, like, I'm just like, and I'm living that right now. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And it's just, it, it's and you'll just, look back you know, on it, man, I, and it's going to be I was, like, almost, like, ready to get up and, like, hug this guy. <laughs> <laughs> trying to hold myself down, right? But yeah. Like, just, like, you know, that message is, like, it's the most special message, like, you know. 100%. The steps, the, like, you know, taking, you know, each step comes with a landing, right? That landing comes mm -hmm. with what's there, right? there yeah. Yeah. Take the next and, and, and you're gonna end up in a spot that you can't even imagine imagine yeah because yeah. that's where the process takes you like wherever you think you're gonna go it's gonna take you in a it's much be better spot greater. that you can't yeah. even imagine it'll be far and, greater and, than and you i never really understood that like the people that i know like people that i can call friends like you know like i've had some great mentors like russell peters and stuff like that mm. same guys that from grade eight was who special i was watching on comedy YouTube, central yeah, yeah, and yeah. then <laughs> imitating and now he's like He's like somebody I can just call, call right yeah. now and yeah. someone that supported me through my career, giving me a place to stay in Vegas. Like, you know, so he's like, he's been a man. But these are people that you cross paths with people that are on their own individual process. I cross paths with you now, right? You have your process. We're not on the same thing. You're doing your thing. I'm yeah. doing my thing. 
that's the beauty of energy and people's energy coming together, mm. right? And that's why I was saying when I started this whole thing, I didn't understand it at the point. I had to cut the wires to a lot of people around me yep. because I realized it did not serve me no more. Yep. Yeah, I thought it was selfish. I thought it was like, you know, like, who am I to be this person, person that can yep. just cut people off? Oh, yeah, but yeah. now I understand. Now I understood why whatever was inside of me was telling me to do it because I had to make way for these dreamers and these people that are on the path and us to carry each other, whatever they were doing. Yep. And now I just meet higher levels of it. I go to Vegas and now it's higher levels of it. And wherever my life's going to take me, if I'm on my pro one, like steady, I stay on my process, the more levels it's going to open up. Yep. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a beautiful message. Uh, oh, yeah. I think everybody has their own trajectory. Focus on you. Don't envy other people's success. Um, Focus on yourself. Like exactly. People that, most people that are haters are people that have, um, that don't, that, that comes down to a lot of insecurity in yourself. Yep. And a lot of it is just not being happy with who you are right. that makes you. So who this you is why. Are. So this is why I said in the first couple few years, I had to fall in love with myself. Mm. As, as weird, weird as, as it sounds, it sounds yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not because no, I had, I can't like, like me with my wife. I don't expect her to complete me. I should be a completed version with of myself yourself. that works on myself and I bring it to her. Yep. Mm. Right. And then we kind of create this thing in the middle here. Right. Yep. Yeah. Her goal is not to fix you, the things that anybody. I'm missing. Yep. Right. Yeah. That's on me and she, it's on her. And yep. we find this thing in the middle there. That's something I had to learn along the way. Cause I learned it by myself. Mm. But then when I got in a relationship, I had to be like, I had to figure out, Oh yeah. Okay. So it works like that here too. Yep. Yeah. It's not her to, to fill those voids and it's not me to fill her voids. We have to find this new chemistry. Well, that's in that's the journey too of, of in life. In life, like no, that's a, it's, it's, it's a lonely, family. it's a lonely road though. Like as an athlete, yeah. But then gradually, like you're saying, you find the right people along the journey. Yeah. The, the people that actually value your hustle, the ambition, the adversity that you've been through, they truly value it, and then they're there to support you. That's yeah, like, but but you also have to you have to find the va you got to be your number one fan you got to be your number one cheerleader you got to value yep. yourself first yeah. right and then other people can see the value in you mm -hmm. so you have to once again you have to spend that time by yourself you have to fall in love with yourself you have to understand that even if we're all flawed human beings who yeah. who we're all flawed human beings but we all have a beautiful side to us where it we have something to give to the world yeah. right like i have my flaws i have plenty of them but there's something also another side of me that has this this drive that can maybe bring some fire out of people right yep. mm. that deals with a lot of darkness within within himself also mm -hmm. and that's the same thing with everybody that everyone is on their own process to find themselves but first i always say find the love within yourself and that takes time some people it takes long journey a year some yeah. people it takes three years some mm -hmm. people come from a shitload of trauma yeah and they gotta figure out who they are and what they went through and that they're not a broken individual mm -hmm. and that they are capable of something and now using that pain and actually using it to your your advantage, advantage yeah. yeah like i got like bullied and stuff like that and then that's probably not even a comparison to some of the stories i've heard of like you know other people's trauma and but I've come across my bullies and I thank them. Mm. I'm like, thank, like, you know, like, thank you. like, thank you. Because it was that, that shittiness of feeling like a crappy, worthless human being mm. that made me go like, dude, I'm worth something else. And let me, and when I moved here, I'm like, I gotta be something else. I gotta, yeah. I gotta build that power within myself. And nobody taught me how to do it. No, there was no book. There was no secret <laughs> pill I took. Yeah. It was me just figuring out this wire in my head and just, Going okay, let's just figure this whole like thing even, out. Even I tell like Kabir, like consider as a little younger brother, I gave him this quote, and it's a lot of people don't really, you know, don't really on the same page about it. Mm -hmm. And I tell him like, be selfish before being selfless. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Because I used to be told that being selfish was bad, and the more I come selfish. across it, the more top level people, they're like, no, you have to be, be selfish. selfish you have to be selfish. You yeah. have to focus on yourself. Yeah. Because and also and me personally. I love selfish people because I know why I love that. You know why I love selfish people because I know they're not haters because they're so involved with themselves exactly. and where they got to get to. They 100%. don't got time to look at anybody else. 100%. Those people I trust more than anything, right? Yeah. The people that are looking everywhere and seeing everything and be like, oh, that guy sucks. That guy's <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah. trolls and stuff. But yeah. the selfish person is so in themselves and so focused on themselves. They're all about them where they need. And then yeah. eventually 
they can figure out Think something and be back. selfish. They're going to have time, right? To look so I for. had to, as an MMA fighter, you have to be selfish. Yep. You yeah. have to be. You have to be. It's all about you. Like during camp, like I tell my wife, and I apologize to her beforehand, and she's all about it. She's on the ride. She's the, my biggest supporter. Is I'm like I'm gonna have to be selfish. Everything's about me for the next six to eight weeks. Like mm -hmm. I have a mission. I'm the only one going in that cage. Mm -hmm. There's nobody coming with me. Yep. Like your prayers and everything are gonna come with me, but there's nothing else but myself going in yep. there. So, yep. but now this is why I said at the podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have to be selfless with the information and the knowledge I've gained, and now I have to put it out put there. there. Yeah, there's somebody that takes it and becomes inspired by it. So it's not about holding all that, learning all this stuff, and holding it to yourself. Mm. It's about putting it out there, okay, putting yeah. it out there. What exactly. do you know by yourself? They don't care. Like most of the people that are listen, they don't give a shit about my record. They don't. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. What knowledge what do you know about? What did you learn about yourself? What's, yeah. What what struggles? That's what I can talk on now. That's selfless information I can put out. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully, there's another fighter much better than me years down the road, and he's like, okay, he he told me this was where I heard this. And Resistance. that's the whole idea, yeah. right? Yeah. Is keep pushing forward in whatever field it yeah, may be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, man. And Appreciate is, there, is it, there anything that people should know about, like any community, you know, that where they can outreach or help you, like with anything that you have going on? Or any way to support you. In a yeah, second. support yeah. what you call or anything is, man. For me, like, um, there's nothing really that, like, you know, like me and my wife, we do a lot of like outreach work and stuff like that with high risk use and stuff. But there's like, like that's just yeah. stuff that we do on our own, oh, really, right? Yeah. Um, for me, just follow my journey on, on, on Instagram if you guys want to follow it. And just I just appreciate all the energy that, that comes my way and yeah. stuff like that. I'm mm -hmm. very grateful for it. And just hope I keep making you guys proud and keep representing, right? Yeah, and that's where it all comes down to it. No, I appreciate it, man. Thank yes, you sir. so much. Appreciate Thank it, man. You. Hey, peace out. And uh, that's a wrap. <laughs> See you.